As a presentation, I'm going to speak a little bit about some advice for you having gone through some of the startup experience. I have to show this now that we're a publicly listed company. You've now seen it. So I co-founded two startups, Boku and The Digs, and I was the chief product officer of two other companies, DocuSign and Ingenio. Two of these companies were acquired, one by AT&T, and the other two have gone public, both with actually in the last six months. And so I want to share some of the lessons I've learned along the way. For starters, when you look at the companies that have done well, you always see this beautiful hockey stick. And with the hockey stick, what people don't realize is that, sure, you can layer on the blade of the hockey stick, but actually, if you were to zoom out, there's a long period of time where you are just grinding and working away. So for DocuSign, we were started 15 years ago, and this is actually what our revenue and our customer growth looks like. So it's very exciting that we went public, but it took a long time and a lot of work to get there. And so what are some tips for you as you're floating out in space with no leverage and nothing to push off of? Okay, That's kind of how it feels as a, as a founder. It's a very sort of scary space. So here's three things that I've learned along the way. The first one I call decision velocity. This is deciding as many things as possible as quickly as possible so that you increase the chances that you'll, quote, hit the target. For me, very early in my career, I had two wonderful women that I worked with, Mary and Tanya. Mary would make four decisions a quarter, and she was always right. And Tanya would make 100 decisions a quarter, and three of them would be wrong. But she moved the ball forward a lot quicker, and she is a great role model, and it's kind of how we've operated as startups. Now, Harvard Business Review did a paper on those companies that make more decisions faster. Not just faster, but more decisions actually are more successful. So you want to increase your chances of hitting the target, you send out a lot of arrows. The second piece of advice is to create an advisory board, people that you give shares to in your company. Now, as a model, I look at uh, Michael Jordan in this example. He was the first professional athlete to build around him a team of doctors, weight trainers, nutritionists, psychologists for sports psychology, and then obviously people who knew the sport of basketball. So you, as a founder, should be doing the same thing. You want to find somebody that can help you with human resources and culture, help you with legal, finance, sales, and ultimately, strategy. Now, at all of our different companies, we've had advisory boards, and it's quite cheap. You give them some shares in your company, and not only do they help you grow as a leader, they also have a vested interest in your success. It's a very cheap way to get that help from people, and people are actually quite happy to do it, even for quite a little bit of amount of shares. So we actually, I think DocuSign has a 50-person advisory board that includes uh, board members of SAP and BASF. And the final point is to try and find a purpose in the creation of your business. So you heard Al Gore speak yesterday. He actually mentioned us. Uh, by round of applause, how many would rather have Al Gore as the President of the United States than Donald Trump? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, you can erase that from the video. Um, big fan of Al Gore's. He really he invested with Generation Investments in, in DocuSign because he has a philosophy that says, invest in companies that are doing digitalization that also have a mission to help the planet actually will have greater returns. And hopefully, we're helping prove that cause. So I have to tell you a little bit about DocuSign in terms of sharing what it means to be a business with a purpose. So. Contracts exist throughout business, right? So you've got your employment contract, your sales contracts. We've identified 2,000 places where contracts exist. But the process for coming to agreement is, in many ways, uh, analog and broken and slow. So you've experienced this every time you touch a piece of paper, you're having to do manual entry, and it costs money. And everyone has a system of agreement. They just don't know it. It's Word documents. It's file cabinets, and what we have noticed is this lack of speed and lack of digitization. This is the opportunity for that first step on the, the progress to being a full digital uh, business. So DocuSign 
we have this philosophy that actually paper is not necessary anymore. You do not need paper, and legally, actually, in the European Union, the regulations changed two years ago, and we are the this sort of clear category leader where, for all of the business that you do, it is now absolutely legal and functional to be able to do all of your contracts electronically. There are plenty of benefits from this. Obviously, you save money from the paper prints and shipping costs, the dual entry, but here's where it gets really interesting. It happens faster. So when I ship out a contract, and this is, these are statistics from DocuSign, of the contracts that are signed, nearly, oh, just over 80%, finish within 24 hours. And if you're in sales or if you're in a competitive market trying to hire employees, this is important to you because if you send out a contract, we also see that that same set, 50% get signed in under 15 minutes. So you've hired that employee before Google or Facebook was able to. And then, of course, your customers and your employees, they're happier. They enjoy using your software. So our NPS as a service is 63, but we also help companies grow their NPS. This is the established credibility slide. So we have lots of customers like SAP, BASF, Bayer, uh, Adidas, etc. And we are global with data centers here. But what it means to have a purpose is that in DocuSign's very fabric, what we're doing is getting rid of the need for paper all around the world. And we sat back and did some calculations. With the DocuSign service, the amount of trees that we've saved are the equivalent to 100 tier gardens as of a year and a half ago. So I haven't updated the stats, but you can see that that solves carbon emissions, that solves uh, a lot of water and fuel use. So DocuSign inherent in its business has a mission and a purpose. What does that do for you? Well, obviously, your customers like working with companies that have a mission and purpose, and your employees feel great about working there. But you can't always create a business that's going to have a purpose. So the last thing I want to share about is DocuSign, in addition to having a business model that does this, we created the DocuSign Impact Foundation. Salesforce and others have pioneered this model where 1% of revenue, or profits, sorry, 1% of profits, 1% of product, and 1% of employees' time is given back to the community. And so this is an example of DocuSign employees in our 14 offices around the world volunteering, which finally keeps employee turnover down and uh, uh, increases retention. So the, the three tips, decision velocity, have an advisory board, and a business with a purpose. Thank you very much.